Good day. All right, just to explain myself, I went to an internet marketing seminar about two years ago, and they gave out these uh, free audio tracks, uh, which you can use in your videos. And um, some of them were quite good, some of them were all right, but then there was little numbers like that one, which I just thought, I'm never gonna use that in my video. But I thought, today's the day I'm gonna give it a shot. So let me know your feedback on the new title intro for Blender Guru. Um, anyway. In this video, I'm going to show you how to render out an animation. So, um, you know, you'd think rendering out an animation in Blender would be quite simple, and uh, it is really, but it's still quite confusing to beginners. So, let's say you've got uh, this masterpiece of an animation right here, and you go, yeah, this is ready for Hollywood. So, you want to render it out into a finished movie file, which you can send to your friends and um, hopefully get a job. So you would think you would, you know, go down here in the render settings, you see output, and then you go, aha, movie. I need to use one of these. Wrong. Actually, you don't use one of them. Not yet. Okay. What you need to actually do is you need to render out your animation into individual stills. Okay. And you might be wondering, why? Why do we need to render it out into individual stills? Why can't we just render it out to these? Okay, there's a few reasons. First one being is that if you render it out to any of these ones here, there's a chance that when it finishes, it's gonna produce a corrupt AVI file, which is something I found out many years ago. And um, yeah, it's just a pain. You finish it and then you go, oh, it's a corrupt file. And then it's only when you post it on a forum that people tell you that you're doing it the wrong way. Uh, the other reason is that say you paused the uh, the render halfway through, like it's been rendering for a few days and you pause it, you can't, you won't be able to get back any of that time that's been rendering because you've only got, you know, it's only rendering it to one finished file. And if you stop it halfway through, it's going to produce a corrupt file. So... It's always, always, always good practice to render it out into individual files, uh, and then you have a lot more control over everything, and it's just the standard way of working. Okay, so as a rule of thumb, if it's a test animation, you would be rendering it out to JPEGs. JPEGs are a lossy format, which means you will lose some, uh, some quality to it, but if it's a test animation, JPEG is fine. If it's a final animation, PNG is the way to go. That's a lossless format. It produces, I think about one megabyte files for you know 720p animation or whatever. So it's a lot higher than JPEGs, but it's like I said, it's lossless, so you don't lose any data. And if you want to be really extreme, one of those special uses, you can use OpenEXR. Now, I don't think I've ever used OpenEXR, um, but I know that it was used during Sintel and I think Big Buck Bunny as well. It's just basically a really, really large file format, um, I think about what, 10 megabytes of file or something like that, something crazy, but it ensures that you you keep all the color information. So it's basically 100% kind of lossless kind of format. At least that's my understanding of it. Anyway, I've never used it. I, if it's a final animation, I always render it out to PNG. And being that this here is a final animation, not a test render, we want it to be in our, um, our good format. So we're going to render it to PNG. So you need to find a place on your computer in which you're going to save it. So I'm going to create a new folder right here. And I'm going to call this my final cube masterpiece. Just hit accept. And then let's, ooh, I'm going to do it in real time. So you know what? Let's turn off all of these that we don't need. Ray tracing shadows. We'll have some shadows. Okay. Go cube. Go, 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 go. You're not moving. You're not moving. Faster. So, I mean, this is probably going to take a while. Anyway, let's just, uh, I'll show you what it's doing in the meantime. So basically, every single frame is being rendered out into a new image file, as you can see right here. Um, now, this is going to continue doing this, and basically, once it's finished, you're going to be uh, you're going to have a folder full of images like this. Now, the good thing about doing it in this fashion, rather than, you know, the, like I said, using the AVI or whatever it was, is that let's say it's been rendering for a few days because it's a really advanced animation, and you decide, you know what, now it's time to play some video games. You can pause it. By pausing it, I basically mean stop it. So you can stop it right there. 
and you can see it's stopped at frame 54. Um, and then later on, you can come back to the file, reopen it, and you can go, all right, well, it finished at frame 54 last time. Let's start it at frame 55. Hit animate again, and you can see that it's now just kicked off where it left previously. So that is a really, really good thing about using this, um, doing it this fashion instead of the other. The other one is, like I said, I mean, you know, you're not going to get any corrupt files or anything. These are image files, you know, it's, it, it's an image file. So it, there's not going to be any problem opening it in the future or anything like that. It's all going to work and um, it's basically lossless. So anyway, it's up to frame, whatever that is. Let's get it to 90. We, okay, we're going to stop it right there. Okay, so let's say you've finished your animation now, now you've got the folder full of files. Now let's render it into a movie file. So we're basically taking all these stills and making an animation out of it. So to do that, we go from default and we click on video editing, okay? I'm gonna move that along, we don't need to see that. Um, I won't go into all the details of the video sequence editor, but basically, um, basically to make it work, all you need to do is just go ahead and hit add and then image. And then go to your folder, hit A to select all the files, and then hit Add Image Sequence. So now it's created this strip here, which if you play through it like this, you can see that it's playing through all of those um, all of those frames there. And if you hit Control Up Arrow in that box there, and then hit Number Pad One, it will allow you to play through it like this. So you can see how it looks directly in Blender without having to do anything. Um, okay, so what we want to do um, is we want to render this out to a file now. So first things first, we want to make sure that our animation stops wherever this you know, image sequence here stops. So that is frame 91. So I'm going to make frame 91 is the end. So now we're going to jump back over to the default view here. Go down underneath the output settings and we're going to choose H. 264. Now it depends on which version of Blender you're using, if you're using it on a Linux or whatever, you might not have this option. I know there's all these kind of politics around, uh, you know, if we're going to have FFmpeg or whatever that's in there. I mean, I don't really know. I don't really care either, to be honest. Um, I'm just showing you what I do if it's just a test animation or whatever. Um, I'm going to use uh, QuickTime. I'm just going to turn up the bitrate. Um, I don't really know what a lot of these settings here do. To be honest, I usually just, you know, use Adobe Premiere to render it out, but I sometimes use Blender, so this is what I do. Um, for the output, let's just choose a name. I'm going to call this Final Animation. Hit Accept. And now I'm going to hit Animate. Now, this isn't actually animating the cube itself in the background. All it's doing is scrolling through all of these frames here and then creating a, a movie out of it. So, if you come back to your folder over here, you should see a dot mov uh, file there. So that's it basically it guys. Um, that's how you render an animation in Blender. Um, like I said, you can do anything with these stills right here. I mean, I like I said, I use uh, Adobe Premiere, but you can use whatever you like. Uh, Blender does it perfectly fine as I've just shown you there. So I hope it was of uh, some relevance to you guys and thanks for watching.